Welcome back to the Apex Gauntlet. I'm Tandy, joined by Ross Miriam. Say hi, Ross. Hi, Ross. Uh, we are two matches deep with Is It 8 PZ and 2 0 for 8 PZ, beating the two boogeymen of the format, Rakdos Midrange and Monogreen Devotion. And now we're on to what I would consider the de facto best aggro deck in the format, Mono White Humans. Ross, this is a deck you've played before. Tell us about it. Yeah, uh, I think just the best aggro deck in the format has a lot of game going along with powerful cards like Adeline and all the creature lands. Mm -hmm. You know, I think Thalia was an incredible addition, and um, you know, really the 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 deck has filled out where you're not playing any individually weak cards anymore. Like Hopeful Initiate and Recruitment Officer have filled out the one slot in the curve. You have a bunch of great twos with Thalia, Thalia's Lieutenant, and Luminarch Aspirant. Mm -hmm. And at this point, like we have so many good threes, it's hard to know which ones we want. Like Extraction yeah. Specialist, Adeline, Brutal Cathar. Uh, Even I mean, Wedding Announcement on the sideboard. Yeah. Like I've seen a main deck before in the like really heavy right I've made games. Before. Yeah. It's a little awkward with Thalia sometimes, but... Uh, so, yeah, now you're at the point where you have so many options, you're, you're actively cutting cards... Uh, to try to find space for everything, but uh, just a really versatile, powerful aggro deck, and I think, importantly, this is a matchup where you're not going to be able to just play your threats, you know, unopposed, and, you know, get, uh, make sure you get max value out of them, because you're going to have to interact on the early turns. Mm -hmm. I think that dynamic is going to change how you play, uh, going to make those cards significantly worse, uh, and, uh, you know, hopefully that plays out in my favor because i'd like to get a dub on the board all right well you are down so you get to be on the plate how to do versus green it was really close match durans i went three and two yeah um it felt like when i was on the play i had a, a lot of breathing room because i could kill the elf on turn one or turn two on the draw i lost the game very quickly because i didn't have a turn one removal spell because my mana was a little wo wonky and then another game i just had like one powerful turn where I messed up. And if I had done a little bit differently, I might have four one but all right. Uh you're on the play. How's your seven? It is not great. I think this is a hand people would be tempted to keep. I know Thalia is a really powerful card in this matchup, but no one drop and not a ton of pressure out of this hand. Mm -hmm. Uh means that I'm gonna send it back. All right. Because we know the matchup, uh this hand is pretty solid on the draw. Uh I will definitely keep we got some interaction. That's always important. Even in the dark, I would probably keep this hand, but we Even don't have one dark. of those creatures. All right, uh, so so far we've played against uh, Rakdos and Mono Green. Uh, what are your thoughts on the Is it a Power Master deck, Ross? What do you think? Honestly, it has exceeded my expectations pretty awesome. significantly. Ooh, I forgot to decideboard actually from last match. I'm gonna get these That's back classic. into my deck. Ah, oh, come on. There's just some counter spells that are bad oh, that need to God. go back in the deck. Um, I keep a one lander on the play. That's a recipe for disaster. But if you're already on six cards, it might be worth. Yeah, I think it's worth it because it's a very good hand if it hits. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons why I can't stand playing aggro decks in this format. Just that kind of thing just happens a bunch where you're mulganing. You have to get a little lucky, you know. But I mean, it is what it is. We've all been there. I'm just going to go ahead and kill it. Your turn. You're up. Go. Just on time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I will play a Thalia Guardian of Fraben. Let's try the bottom. Go. Could have shocked and bought Gigantha, but I know that at the very least he's just going to play another Thalia. I will Thalia, play so. a Luminarch Aspirant. Fair. Get a counter on. You're up. I will attempt to fading hope it. Keep it on top. Draw it. I'm gonna play this tapped and say go. And we'll play a Luminarch Aspirant. Go ahead and just make disappear it. We'll play Recruitment Officer. Sure. You're up. If I impulse it. I'm like really okay trading a bunch of resources here because now I get to go TPI plus treasure cruise. Eat the graveyard, get three cards, refresh. And that's why I think Fading Hope is so good in the deck. We are super fine trading down on resources because of cards like Treasure Cruise. And it just is kind of a ubiquitous answer against so much of the format's tough cards. And it's like the one man interactive piece that I think the deck was really missing before. 
Uh, I really needed to draw another land there. You already drew two lands. Can't be mad. <laughs> um. Brutal Cathar, the Iconoclast. Sure. Good day. You're up. Good day. Alright. Uh, fading Hope Dot. Get this back. Let's try. Top part's fine. Then we'll play a one mine trigger. So, yeah. So many sick ones, non so many sick ones. We'll draw two. And play a consider deep tap land pack for one. 19. Here we go. Brutal Cathar. Sure. I got it. Zero. Okay, so now we got three of these. And now he probably has Brave the Elements up. Uh, so I can just kind of ignore the Brutal Cathar for a while, I think. We'll see. Um, so maybe it's worth it to just go ahead and get it out of his hand, though. And that does put another card in the graveyard for me. Plus, he might just not have it. All right, I'll target. Uh, in response to that, I'm going to play... Um, a consider to try to find an impulse in response graveyard plan opt in response sorry okay i will name red all right land shredder cruise oh del six Draw three one two three no attacks here we go Um, animate Mutavolt, Valley's Lieutenant, mm -hmm. Valley's Lieutenant, you can I've drop. Uh, discard a spire block now. All right. And, uh, I will gladly block if you want to attack. <laughs> yeah. Four, four is just barely not big enough. Yeah. Uh, but hopefully we'll survive and now survive Strangler, another impulse. So. Mm -hmm. And I've already played all three Fading Hope, I think. So yep. now I think we're just going to have to ignore it. All right. So we're going to pay four for TPI and Young PZ. We're going to draw discard a Young PZ. And then we're going to get a counter on that. And land for turn. Play a cruise. It's... This is the deck, man. I don't know what to this tell you. This is the third cruise. <laughs> They've cruise baguettes cruise. All right, <laughs> so we get an elemental and one more of these. I'm not attacking, so I'm just going to leave this back here. Draw three. Yeah. All right. Uh, attack for two flying. I think I'm just fine. All these artifact tokens mean the Brave Elements is just not a problem anymore either. So I'll just say go. I already played a land, so. I know Apex is so sick. You're going to like this build, I think, Taryn. <laughs> I can just see him. He's like already getting the cards off of TCG player or whatever. He's like, I need Fading Hope stat. <laughs> um, three cards in hand. You're on. Looking at nine power. I don't know if I win this game. Mm -hmm. You already own them? Ah, oh, that's fair. They were really the reason why I like it so much, I, I played it in the standard taking turns back last year in standard. Oh, yeah. I was bonk. So we get one of these. Got two of these. Scry. Spike field hazard can kill Thaw's lieutenant, but I think I just want more card draw effects at this point, so I'll just bit. Um pack four six. Okay, I think we're maybe in swarm mode, so I might just take it and then just like try to churn some more tokens the next turn and then swing with everybody. We have Den of the Bugbear. 
He has three blockers. Brutal Cathar is not going to flip. Um, okay. Um, this is just a 2-2. Two -two. Yeah. One card in hand. All right. Uh, these two tokens will block here, and these five will block here. You go down to one soldier. I'll play extraction specialist. Ah, yeah, should have saw that coming. You get to connive. Thank you. Um, I'm just gonna discard a spark. No, don't really need to land. Uh, third counter here, counter here, counter on Thalia. And that's another good reason not to keep the spark field hazards because they just can get they can grow. Wrong. Easy. Consider make two elementals and one of these. Consider top card will keep and I'll just play Steam Vents tapped. I'm gonna attack for two of the Ledger Shredder. Put you in fifteen. I played. Oh, I forgot to connive also. But I think I already... Oh, yeah, I drew. Yeah, okay, that's fine. I just missed my Ledger Shredder. That's okay. Here you go. Um... All right, Anthony. It's a really great store. You know, they uh, they have a lot of really cool events. Like tomorrow, for example, there's a 1K RCQ uh, and a qualifier for the Apex Invitational rolled into one. Is there a link to Todd's updated list? There sure is. Spine House. Check it out right there in that link. Uh, animate Mutavolt. Mm -hmm. Hack with Mutavolt and Thalia. Um, we'll put four tokens on Thalia. That is not enough. All right. First. <laughs> mm. Is it just eight damage? Yeah. And then you're probably just going to try to flip your... Your thingy. Um, maybe I should attack the Lair Shredder. All right, uh, four tokens on the Muta Vault. We'll take three from Thalia. Yep. Play Muta Vault. Yep. Pass the turn, it goes to Knight. Rock. All right, uh, two for Ledgerman. And then I'll pay, what, five for Treasure Cruise? Delving all four. The fourth one. We'll get two of these, one of these. Yep. Can I have uh, this one? This one. Draw three. Am I gonna get decked? <laughs> Am I gonna get decked? All right, I will strangle the Thalia and make more tokens. And then attack for three. Play River Glide. Let's take a... And you get to flip your Moon Rage groups. Yep. Uh, so what do I want to exile? Probably the big letter shredder, but maybe the TPI because it makes your brutal cathar or it makes your brave the elements much worse. Um, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Um, two cards in hand. Uh, yeah, yeah. One of the cool things about the Apex is the tournaments that they run is they they have a scaling price support so. The more people we get, the bigger the price support. The the one K is a guarantee. All right. Have you drawn for turn? No. Okay. It's hard to think. I just don't need Gigantha. It was really good against Rakdos, so but I just have so much mana. I just have no desire to get it over. Act for four. Three tokens. I go to sixteen. Pass the turn. Back to night. Right. Drop. Mm. 
for the 12th. Recruitment officer. Sure. Here. Luminarch aspirant. Mm -hmm. We're here. Now you've got two, four, five, six, but you could have instant seed spell as well. But this has first strike, so sure do. I don't see how you could put enough in front of it at all. Ah, there we go. That's where you're. I don't know um, what that means. I only play one spell. Uh, I played two spells. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry, sorry. You, you get to connect three times. All so. right, knife. I'll just say it's this one. I didn't specify. You you always want to specify which one's yeah. going. So this one first, this one, this one. Just yeah. I'll, I always punish myself if I forget. Okay. All right. Um, it's also a must, so I might actually deck myself with three shredders. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you should just say go, right? I th well, I've got a counter from the aspirant that has to go oh, somewhere. Sure. Um, I guess that will go on the recruitment officer because okay. I I could make this a seven and try to attack because then if you if you animate the hall, yeah, if you animate the hall, you can have any one or two mana spell, mm -hmm. uh, and that would be a complete disaster. So, but yeah, so let's make that a three. Let's put one here. And then pass. Okay. Internal bouncer thing. Oh, I'm dead. Yeah. Are you conceding or should we keep yeah. playing? Okay. As soon as that happens, the game's over. Yeah. I'll pay the life from the wood. So that game, we had a lot of fading hopes early, which felt pretty darn good, if I'm being honest. Fading uh, hope is very good when your opponent has no lands and you draw a bunch of treasure cruises. Mm -hmm. We are not, like, super behind on time. I don't think we're going to get to play five. Do you want to go ahead and oh. time board or no? No, we'll, we'll play three board. All right. Because either we'll have time because the games I win will be faster. Sure. And if I just lose all the games and we don't have time, then we can yeah, just end that's because I've lost all the games. <laughs> all righty. Uh, while we're shuffling up here for game number two, Ross is going to be on the play. What kind of hand are you looking for? One drop heavy? You like yeah, a nice curve? curve. Early curve. Uh, my my opening seven that last game was no one drop. Uh, you know, maybe could have kept it. Probably would have been better than the hand I ended up keeping. Mm -hmm. But that's the at game least you, you, play. you kept the one laner. You got you drew a bunch of lands, which was nice. Yeah, it wasn't. You know, it, it, it didn't go perfectly, but it went fine. Um, just gave you too much time to set up all your stuff. Mm -hmm. it just goes to show how important the early pressure is. Yep. Not having a play on two with the miss land drop was backbreaking. I was very surprised you actually came back. And I was I was a little scared the extraction specialist turn. I felt like I really punted, but then I just had overwhelming resources. I will uh, keep my hand. Uh, me too. I will play Dauntless Bodyguard. And just to prevent from getting blown out, we'll go ahead and spike field it. Exile matters a good bit too for the uh, extraction specialist later on. Uh, Aspirant get a counter. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna go ahead and fire and pulse it just to. Or am I? I guess I'll play a ledger shredder. I'll just punish you for playing two spells next turn. I think it's just better to use my mana next turn. I don't have two spells to play if I play my impulse, and I can just impulse like any other creature. It's not a big deal. Potentially get hosed by some stuff. Yeah, you, yeah, you don't really get three. holes. Yeah. So you take three at 17. Long pass the turn. All right, so we'll play TPI, and then I'll impulse target this, connive on the stack, resolve, connive, pitch this. This dies, I get a token. This gets a counter. And I think I just want to play defense. The Adeline's probably not dying next turn uh so i just want to basically take a hit from it and eat the token so i'll just say go and now if he plays two spells it might be in business beautiful extraction specialist return aspirant 
So now um, this is four, five toughness to get you to four power. Um, so if I didn't put a counter on the re the Adeline, you are actually able to d make a reasonable double block. I think you would trade either of those for the Adeline. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'll put counter on Adeline, attack, get a token. Okay. Uh, I don't think it's worth to trade my whole board for the Adeline, so I'm just going to eat the token and take a hit. Take for five. Five, yeah. Yeah, 12. Yeah, I can maybe start chum blocking it soon uh, with the tokens if I need to, but it's not worth doing it just yet, I don't think. Okay. Um, let's see, I already have two red, so we'll play this. Play PZ. In the main phase of consider, trigger. Uh, resolve this. Graveyard. Now do I want to attack? Probably not. I'll just say go. Tagging the Shredder is hard against the Adeline. Yes. It doesn't have reach, but I just want yeah. to play defense and, and threaten like double, triple box now. But I think I'll just chump and eat the token since I just have churn forever. Now my question is how I can how can I utilize these mutables? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I do have the potential to trade tokens for them, but I only have the three right now. There's a good chance if I had a Fire Impulse or something, I I guess maybe I can be holding it. I don't know. Like, let's say I just fire up both Mutal Alts and attack with everything. I make the Specialist a 4-3. Yeah, so those four come in, uh, you get a, and token. I get a token. You can eat the token, and then... I'll probably eat a Mutal Alt, and then just like oh, trade yeah, with a Mutal a Alt. Chump and then take five or six. Yeah. Okay. It's not so that the bad. The problem is that Shredder eats eats those things, right? Um, and so yeah, if I did that, you would just eat a mute of all. Um, you know, maybe trade for the other one with Pyromancer, and then you know, uh, chump these two. That doesn't seem great. Yeah, I guess you would probably chump the Adeline and then take uh take a hit. But I think I would, I would probably rather just go like put a counter here, attack. Yeah, it's... Um, guess I'll make sure the Adelina's has max power. Yeah. Uh, so I'll play a Kithian. Uh, go to beginning of combat, counter on the specialist, send, get a token. This only flips when it attacks, right? Yes, okay. it and two other creatures. All right, so I will. Chump, chump, eat a token. Okay. Uh, so I've gotten rid of two tokens and gained four. Mm -hmm. And then I'll pass the turn. Mm. I think I might need to hold up extra red. Kill six. We get one of each. Draw three. I will not play to land yet, right? No. Okay. Land for turn. I'll play Ops Connive with Shredder. I discard a shredder. Resolve ops. I'll get two tokens. Yeah. Thank you. And should you have six tokens? I've played two spells this turn, not three. So I should, and I started with one. So I should, should have, have this would be at yeah, three, three. Okay. and this should be at two. Okay. Yeah. This is off to the side. All right. And then uh, I'll just say go. Um, let me make sure I know what this Gideon does. That's a cool idea, Mimi. Uh, Claim to Fame has often been good in Pioneer with Young Pyromancer in the past. I think splashing a whole color for it, though, is a bit awkward. Makes your mana base much worse. You deal yourself a lot more damage. Your lands enter tap too much. 
you probably have to play way more of like the blue black storm carp coast card um green hand f4 Beginning in combat and on specialist mush and token uh, before blocks, I'm going to play a Consider. I'm going to make two tokens. One here. One here. So, uh, this graveyard. And then I will play Fiery Impulse on Luminarch Aspirant, and I will Connive. Can I resolve? Yeah. Get another token. This. Can I resolve? I'm going to discard a make disappear. All right. May I block? Yep. All right. Uh, so these five on Adeline, I think, is pretty easy. That prevents uh, what you call it. Uh, Brave the elements. And then this, these four can just trade for specialist. And then this can eat the token. I guess this could eat specialist. Yeah. Okay, uh, these five on Adeline, this eat specialist, this box here. Um, I guess I'll animate a vault so I deal with all the soldiers. Okay. I gain five. Yep. I get 29, I'm at 12. Uh, Brutal Cathar, the Ledger Shredder. We got one. This thing. Yes. Right. Now we go to Turbo. You mean you just haven't drawn Lance? Play to land like every turn. All right, we'll play PZ, play a one mine, we get up to five. One, two. Oh. I have an impulse, I don't know what to kill. The Kithian is probably not that scary. You can just concede if you want, that's fine. Yeah, I'm very dead. Also playing a consider, so. This, All right. Not having reasonable ways to answer the two ones main has been rough, and yeah. fortunately, this build that I'm playing does not have uh, the portal holes on the sideboard. Yeah, it, portal instead holes. it's playing this poopy laydown arms. Well, do you want to just pretend like we have? Uh, I mean, that card's fine, right? It's mana value. If you just have two planes, it takes care of it. Um. Plus, I don't have the Odawario or a Braid blowout. Anyway, uh, we're going to do some sideboard in here. Cool. On my side, I'm going to be cutting some of the more reactive cards, like uh, Make Disappear. It's very good against mid-range stuff, not that great against aggro. Do we get Modern later? Yeah, we're going to be playing Modern, uh, a whole gauntlet of Modern after this. We're also going to be playing Aspiring Spikes, Red Green Food Deck, and we're going to be playing against three of the top killers from Modern. A Braid, Running Volley, both come in. And maybe Rose, but probably not. Rose is okay for killing Adeline, so I'll consider it. But I don't have a ton of things that want to come out. I think Fading Hope is something you could potentially get rid of because it's not that efficient. And after Cyborg, you kind of get to slightly upgrade it to real removal. And the only thing that it really handles that we are occasionally have trouble with is Adeline. And I, but I, I want to trade one for one at all times, basically. And then I want... Uh, a refuel on resources with crews and of one mind plus if they have rest in peace i really don't want to board out my of one minds so i'll just board out the fading hopes and bring in two roasts instead yeah i mean i've needed to answer these creatures but i don't think brutal like brutal catharsis doesn't do it yeah um and not a big fan of lieutenant against decks with a bunch of cheap removal or not uh aspirant yeah luminar aspirant so love the wedding is the other cut yeah not just the uh the bodies but the anthem is going to be important for making your tokens have a you know a hard time trading up right where's my other and then rest in peace you might be tempted to bring in a bunch of copies of it but it's a card that you just can't afford to draw multiples of so i'm fine happy to have one as a luxury if i draw it cruise is shut down 
Hopefully I don't draw it after you cruise. Um, but you, you really just can't afford to read it. Even, even the first is not a, a stone lock to bring in. But I've got the eight cards I want to cut, so... Definitely wish I had better removal. Yeah, maybe just more portable hold or something would help. And this is a matchup where you would really want deck and stone. That's true. That's true. A card that a lot of lists have moved away from because you need to... Uh, this doesn't answer a lot of things efficiently against Rakdos in particular. Like giving, giving them the clue is really rough. Mm -hmm. but that's one of the issues I've had with the human stack is you want to have removal spells for whatever key threats your opponents have. But the metagame is so diverse that you can't fit all the removal spells you're going to need in a long tournament in one side. Mm -hmm. So I would love to just have portable hole, you know, destroy evil, deck in stone, and something else and cover all my bases, but you just don't have room for it all. Yep. All right. Well, Rod's going to be on the play here for game number three. I'm on a mulligan. My seven had a one land in it, and it did not cast up. Or consider now that's another thing that might actually be better i i'm a pretty big fan of trimming things like opt uh, against aggro decks because you're just spending most of your time killing things um but the way that the the eight pyromancers work they always need food and it's really difficult to side out a card like opt i'm all again this one lander on the play all right would have been a very good hand at two lands mm -hmm. There are definitely uh, there are some people who have added a twenty third land to humans. Just to, you know, noting that you have so much to do with your mana now, especially with recruitment officer. Yeah, I'm I'm a big fan of playing way more lands uh, in Pioneer just because you just want to be able to use your mana every single turn. Yeah, that's so important to curve out. If you stumble yeah. at all, if you're just dead. Oh, another one lander. Hey. Oh, I'm um, five. I guess I'll keep it. Okay. I will play Dauntless Bodyguard. If I draw the second land, this hand is very good. I just realized I spike fielded your bodyguard earlier when you could have just sacked it. I always forget that you can just sack it without a target. Sure. Yeah. Right, I'll hit it again in a second. Here we go. Got there! Protect. Okay. Uh, we're going to play... Lava Glide Pathway. I'm going to go Strangle. Back. Go Listener Fox. Here we go. They're up. Uh, yeah, go. Uh, that's fine. Back for three. I'm at 17. You're up. I'm going to turn on play Consider. We'll go roast the Salia and play Storm Cloud Coast and say go. Back for one. Six. You're up. Now, this might be a den of the bugbear turn. This is a pretty good spot for it. The token could really be useful later, but I think I'm just going to budge again. Say go. Bodyguard. I'll ball in response and hope you didn't draw brave. You did. SOB. All right, take two. Protect it and tap two. You're up. Still um, feel very dead. Yeah. Oh. You're up. Well, lay down arms now deals with Gigantha, so that's kind of cool. <laughs> All right, let's go Ledgerman. We'll play a land for turn. I'm going to play a cruise for five delves so we can potentially do some stuff later. I'm going to connive free mill. Three. And I will tap for five. Here we go. Mostly because this can check this. My life total is not under super pressure. Another Thalys Lieutenant would be very bad. But, but a hopeful initiate. Yeah. Back to three. Eleven. You're up. I can opt now, but I really want to connive with this. and I'm not guaranteed to connive if I don't do it now. And we'll play River Glide. Start with an opt. Keep. Consider knife. Draw. Just go tokens on. Consider resolves. Graveyard. Draw. 
We'll go roasty toasty this thing. Connect. Oh, for any pulsive response. And then type for six. Cruise for one. Where are you going? Where are you going, Ross? Where are you going? Hold on, let me see if. Oh, and I get that too. <laughs> oh, wait, no, it was a one, two. Never mind. Where are you going? Wow. Pretty, pretty cool deck, huh? Yeah. Firing on all cylinders. Love it. All right, well, that, that game made me want to bring in third roast because sometimes that dog lieutenant gets to be a little too big. And what? And I've got Adeline's. That's true. All right. Well, there was a card that I drew in that game that I thought, oh, I wish this was roast in my deck. I don't remember what card it was, though. And probably actually trim threats because you just don't have that much removal. But the threats are so powerful. Mm. I'll just kill. Couldn't figure it out. Yo, what's up, Cygnus? How you doing today, buddy? Cygnus is in my chat all the time. Likes the 23rd line in humans. Yeah. Oh. Look, this is a learning experience, right? Like, the little things, you know? But I also think that it's just pointing out some inherent flaws in the way people build their decks. Like, we're exploiting that by playing so many powerful two-drops. Like, if you're not playing removal, the two-drops overwhelm your opponent pretty regularly. Oh, that's right. I know what I want. Anyways. Uh oh, I'm all good again. I'm going to keep. I'm going to tank a bit on my draw, depending on what Ross does. But... Oh. You got two lands? Nope. No. I went to, from five lands to one. All right, just walk into six again. And we'll just play like a, you know. If you do add a land, what land would you add? Um, Probably another Chef at Dunes. Nice. Any thoughts on a Singleton Legion's landing? Um, You just don't really have ways to utilize the token very well. That's true. It doesn't make humans, it makes vampires. Yeah, that was a card that got played in the white weenie decks that had venerated locks it on. That's true, yeah. You do have Aspirant. Yeah, but it's just a 1-1. It's like, you know, the. it's really hard to find synergies with, like, Love Shark Beasts 1-1, and it's, like, a very similar effect. Yeah. I actually did play a version of Pioneer Humans a couple years ago uh, for a little while, um, and it, it played venerated locks it on, so I played two Legions Land. Nice. Games. They're great. I think the human synergies with specifically Thal's Lieutenant is just too powerful. I don't know. Just go again. <laughs> Five. Just, just keep or, going. Sorry. You're still on six. Just get you a playable six with like two or three lands, two or three creatures, you know? This has been I can't rough. help my deck's great, you know? Yeah. Just smooshing. This is how I usually feel whenever we play against each other. Because you almost always beat me when we play heads up. But my deck oh. today is cracked. I love it. I don't know. What is our record in, in sanctioned play? Oh, I don't know. Probably me up a bunch. Um, well, I can remember beating you at the Invitational with Absan. Yeah. I beat you at U.S. Nationals in 2010 <laughs> in draft. Oh, in draft. We were in the O2 bracket on day mm -hmm. two. Yeah. Of, and then I beat you in the... Uh, I remember beating you late in a Legacy Open with Elves against some blue deck. Yeah. I know I beat you once I, when I we were playing... I attacked you with three Nettle We were playing... Uh, Green White Mirror and Legacy. Yep, in the in the XO bracket. Yeah, I almost beat you one hundred and one, but I beat you in the second game right as time was called I, because of Gideon yeah. Jura. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I had him absolutely dead to rights, and he just rips Gideon, Gideon Jura. Jura. What a card! We were talking about Gideon Jura last night, man. That card's sick. Um, I think I just Imagine put what a land back. Yep, yep, and try to curve out. Ironic, considering. I will play Recruitment Officer. Alright. I will shock. I'm going to spike what hazard it. 18. Go.
deep in the tank, Ross Miriam. Thought game. Easy game. Go. Never punished for <laughs> casting my spike field hazard. <laughs> I was uh, so dead up to that. All the <laughs> You're up. It do be like that. How many cards in hand? One. All right. Well, let's play third path. No land. Your turn. Smush. Fourteen. You're up. You're up. Oh, perfect. Perfect. So he has one card in hand. If I force him to use his mana, so this is protecting this, right? Yeah. Okay, so you get to do that no matter what. But I do want to just like use all my mana this turn. So maybe, maybe it's this. It's way better. All right, now back two. Since you can't activate castle yet, PT. And now he basically can't attack until he gets a Thal's Lieutenant. Because any one mana spell is just devastating. Uh, top three, three or less. There's a top four cards and then mana value uh, three or less. Yeah. That card's sweet. And we'll select Thalia's Lieutenant. It's like at its best when your draw is at its worst, and it's also just a one mana two one. Okay. What's it called? Uh, that is Recruitment Officer. Well, Lieutenant is pretty good. I would like to cast Light Own Arms on the untapped Iconoclast. We'll consider make two tokens. Then you're going to gain three. Yep. I got a resolve to consider. Not that bad, but it's not that exciting either. And now, if he wants to play Thal's Lieutenant Attack, we're just going to obviously offer trades for days. So, we'll see what he wants to do. Um, I mean, I think I've got, yeah. So, if you want to protect it, you can, but you don't deal any damage. So, it's your choice. Uh, I'm going to assume that you have a removal spell. Yes. Yeah. And so you take three, you go to 14, then I'll play Hopeful Initiate. Get a counter on the lieutenant. All right. We'll go. We'll go Braid on the lieutenant. We'll get a token. We'll play a one mind to draw two, get another token. And then. Shock, go to 12. Play another of one mind to draw two. And I don't think it's worth to offer the trade. I also don't think I think he would definitely take it, so I'll just say go. Like he'll definitely take the trade. It's a good draw. Yeah. Adeline. Sure. Smush, get a training counter, get a human. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will triple block the uh, hopeful initiate, and I'll take. Okay. So you go down to one soldier and take four. Yeah. Let's do this. I don't keep it in the dice. You're up. All right. Let's go. Oh, that was a sick draw. Pyromancer. We'll go. Uh, running volley on this. These one. These. And I will go. Consider one, two, keep the treasure cruise. Yeah, my deck's perfect. I don't know what to tell you. This is, how, this is it's every game, right? You can't you can't say I'm getting lucky if it does it every game. Like it's just good deck pulling, baby. Alright, so these seven. We'll draw three. Alright, and now I'll attack with just this. And sure go. It's made six tokens. Yeah. And my hand has five cards in it. Every game. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a great draw. Yeah. It's not even close to good enough. Yeah. I do I bring back I bring back Thalia's Lieutenant, I guess. Mm -hmm. And got a counter here and a counter on my token. Yeah. And it's counter good. here and yeah. What you this? know what's my favorite part of this deck too? Just by far, these are colorless. I can never die to brave the elements. Yeah. Never. I love it. Like 
can I even attack? This is this is five. You just come on, come on. Yeah. I gotta make six more next yeah, turn. You just go to two, yeah. trade for these, yeah. and then untap with five cards in hand. Like, yeah. Yeah, obviously, four of them are spells. <laughs> This was a good draw. It was. I, I went one drop into Thalia, into two more one drops, into activate recruitment officer, into like Adeline, and I had a removal spell for one one thing. Like, how many removal spells can this deck realistically draw in a game? Yeah. Not very many. You only have the three, right? So yeah. And you drew one, right? That game. Yeah. That's uh, like the number you want to draw, really. Yeah. I don't know what I just felt helpless every single game. All right. Well, I'll bring it back up to Cameron, me and Ross. Uh, we'll talk about the. Pioneer decks, the Pioneer format a little bit. Um, one thing that I, I wanted to stress test with this deck was could it beat the two best decks in the format and still compete with the aggressive decks in the format? Now, you pit me up against like Eidolon the Great Revel, that type of mono red deck, I might be in a little trouble because if I don't have the removal spell for it, every time I play one of those draw spells, I get punished. You have the Thali. removal spell every time. But Well, that's because I play so many. Yeah, why do you even consider the situation where you don't have it? Okay, but what if it's Spikefield Hazard or whatever, right? Like, sure. it, it just, things get sticky sometimes. Um, I love it, man. I, I, I love this deck since I conceived it, and this build felt so good today. It, it ran the smoothest that it's run since I built it, and I have no notes. The three Fading Hopes were excellent. The Meg Disappears were really good. I didn't actually get to counter that much stuff with Make Disappear, but there were so many situations where you had to change your play based yeah. on me having it or the threat of me having it, and that holds a lot of power when you really talk about reactive elements in a deck like this. No, Make Disappear, I think, is, is really good. Yeah. And it gives you this incredible critical mass of cheap spells where like you just always had three one-mana spells in your hand. Like mm -hmm. Every game, your curve is so low. Yeah. It's literally 12 two-mana creatures and then a bunch of one-mana spells. Yeah. Of one mine and treasure cruiser, secret one-mana spells. Yeah. Then you've got eight cantrips and like 10 one-mana removal spells. And then and then make Dispear just kind of ties the room together and make sure you don't lose to some big over-the-top thing. Right. You know? And Fading Hope actually works really well with it too. Like the bounce mechanic, untapping and then having a counter spell for the thing you just bounce. It allows me to kind of create these two-card uh, combos that actually deal with things that Blue Red actually struggles to deal with sometimes. Cavalier of Thorns, a nightmare to get through sometimes. Old Growth Troll, not being able to kill yeah. it because, you know, I don't want to play Obliterating Bolt. I hate Obliterating Bolt. Strangle, felt so good and i'm so happy that i cut obliterating bolt for that card yeah and and just one bounce on troll or cavalier is yeah. enough to get you through either you make disappear on the way back down or you just have enough pressure mm -hmm. and they're not able to get to their big turn because they've got to re-spend the mana casting this cavalier uh and now it, like you know once you get one big attack in now you're good enough to just send everything in and let them block mm -hmm. and you're getting enough damage in at that point and i think make disappear also helps you on the turns where you you know you have the pyromancer or the iconoclast you don't want to cast it on turn two because you want to save it guarantee value you're still just able to trade with whatever thing that they play mm -hmm. you make disappear on two and then untap play your pyromancer play a one mana spell of any sort of kind and start you know getting the ball rolling and even if they have the removal spell now you've just traded a bunch of resources for the first three turns and you're the treasure cruise deck and you got four cruises and eight cantrips you're gonna find it all right so the elephant in the room is a phoenix we didn't put it up against this deck i know for a fact it's a bad matchup for me one thing i want to stress though is that just having one bad matchup among four of the five best decks in the format is not that big of a deal and that's something you just have to get over when you play the format you're just going to lose some matchups because the decks naturally lean one way or another as an yeah. advantage is it phoenix you're playing a very similar game plan but mm -hmm. then galvanic iteration temporal trespass you just yeah, don't have much to an answer to and um and there's not a lot i can sideboard to beat it either i think you know i'll probably bring in the negate but like fading hope not very good against them now what i will say is that this deck is not vulnerable to graveyard hate treasure crew specifically gets shut down by things like rest in peace you can slow it down with unlicensed hearse but the rest of my deck does not care and of one mind still lets me maintain that velocity that you want with your two drop threats while not being vulnerable to the graveyard hate like the treasure cruises are um of one mind felt awesome if you ever made an argument to me that you want to play three treasure cruise and four of one mind i probably wouldn't do it treasure cruise felt unbelievable in this yeah. game in those games and but it's the best i've ever seen of one mind look right but it's but i think that just what you were talking about every spell in our deck except for our threats essentially only costs one mana and because of that we're able to just constantly churn through our deck with treasure cruise and or to fuel treasure cruise right 
And I, I just think that uh, not having that vulnerability of the graveyard actually, for me, makes me want to play this over Phoenix. I lo I play Phoenix a bunch. I, every time I play it, I'm getting whooped by uh, Go Blank. I'm getting beat by Unlicensed Hearst. You know, people play Rest in Peace. And, like, when someone plays a Rest in Peace against your Phoenix deck, half your cards turn off. I hate it. And this deck just doesn't have that exploit factor, which is why I like it so much. Yeah, I do see, you know, I think the that... You know, what you saw today in these three matchups, you know, feels real to me. You know, sometimes that doesn't happen when you just play three, five game sets. I do agree. Is it Phoenix looks like a weak matchup? I think red decks, especially ones with Chain Whirler, are going to be tough. Mm -hmm. That's a that's a hard card to beat. Um, I think if people wanted to beat your deck, you know, you could red decks could even sideboard the one mana like Chain Whirler trigger card. Yeah. Um. Uh, and, was, the and the festivities. Yeah. And the festivities. So there are things like people could do, but you know, right now they're not doing them. Yeah, because they don't have to. This deck is not like all yeah. over the place. So I think we're just in a spot where you're able to exploit because people don't have that type of a answers for you. And, and after having a really good weekend, the first weekend of the RCs where the, the US one was played, one of the Canadian ones, and there was uh, in Europe um, and Brazil. I think there were four that weekend. Uh, you know, Isa Phoenix did quite well across mm -hmm. that weekend. We've seen it diminish over the, the uh, next couple of weeks with people, you know, sideboarding more for it feeling more comfortable cutting some of their green because that deck has dropped and we're seeing more rakdos in the most recent rcs mm -hmm. so with the way the pioneer mega game is going you know it, it looks really solid i don't know how your control matchup exactly is but i think i beat control with basically every single deck and i don't understand how anyone wins with it well but they all they all do we're very vulnerable to temporary lockdown that yeah when i said that you know there's two decks in the top five that are potentially bad matchups i think blue eye control with temporary lockdown and high numbers is problematic and uh because supreme verdict's also very good against me um and but then also uh the phoenix deck just lines up well our removal is not very good against them um you know it's hard to actually churn but you're just a really lean deck against control. You got a bunch of counter spells and some haymakers that you can set up. Like that's a pretty good recipe against them. So I wouldn't feel too bad in that matchup. Mm -hmm. um, I, th I think I would be mainly scared of Phoenix and Red decks, and you really just don't see a lot of those right now. So uh, yeah, it, it, it seems great to me. And that was not, it's not what I was expecting coming into this. Well, I'm glad that I proved you wrong. <laughs> uh, that's going to do it for the Pioneer Gauntlet. But we do have one more Gauntlet coming up. We're going to switch sides. Ross is going to be playing. Um, uh, Spiring Spikes Red Green food, de food Deck. We're going to be running through that uh, through the Modern Gauntlet, but we're going to take a short break here while we eat lunch and take a breather. Uh, let's say about ten to fifteen minutes. We're going to put a fifteen minute timer on the on the screen, but uh, we'll probably be back before then. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back right back for more uh, Apex Gauntlet here at the Apex Gaming Home Store in Caldwell, Ohio. 